Well, it's Erin. I've got something a little different for you guys today. I'm starting the process of leaning down again, and rather than adding in more cardio, I've decided to increase the volume of workouts, specifically leg and back workouts, and do more supersets. So, more reps, more volume, less recovery in between each superset is gonna keep the heart rate up, it's gonna give you the benefits of doing cardio, without having to actually get on the treadmill. So each superset is 12 to 20 reps and the rest in between each superset is probably 45 seconds to a minute. So we're gonna go through three supersets per exercise at 12 to 20 reps. So if you think about what your rep range currently is and where your comfort zone is, take a couple of weeks and go beyond that. So for me, I'm good between five and eight reps. Once I get over eight reps, my brain doesn't want to count. So it's a pretty good indication that I need to work in that kind of slower twitch area. Um, so if you're the same way, take a couple weeks, try this workout. I think you'll find that it will get your heart rate pumping and you'll see results really quick. Let's get into the workout. The first superset is going to be machine squats followed by stiff leg deadlifts. If you don't have this machine at your gym, feel free to do leg press, hack squats, landmine squats, or Smith machine squats. These are all great substitutes for this. Just make sure you do a compound movement that's gonna focus on quads and glutes. So that's the focus for this exercise here. Even though I'm doing 15 reps, I'm focusing on using proper form, going a little bit slower. I'm not rushing through. I'm not trying to do this for time. Upper leg goes to parallel and at mid rep, I really shift the focus to glutes. So I'm trying to lift the weights with just the glutes. Weight drives through the heels. Lower leg stays perpendicular to the ground. So that you see there's not much movement here. Back stays nice and flat. So the last two to three reps should be really hard and I'm doing 40 to 50% of what I would normally do for weights. Whenever you increase the reps, you gotta decrease those weights, but make sure it's challenging enough to where you get those 15, 20 reps in. So here, stiff-legged deadlifts, different than the RDLs. So you've got a longer range of motion here, doing a bit of a hip extension at the top, really hit those glutes, really hitting the hamstrings here. So feet are slightly wider than shoulder width, Regardless of the weight that I pull, it's always a double overhand grip. And the reason for this is because you're training for aesthetics. You're not training for a powerlifting competition. So anytime you use your weaker side as an underhand grip, you are going to develop different musculature. Over time, it will really add up. So if your goal is to not necessarily win a powerlifting competition, but it's to build a complete physique, then consider using a double overhand grip. So here, again, legs are staying pretty straight. I've got a slight bend in the knee always and never wanna lock out. And this is gonna light up your hamstrings, it's gonna light up your glutes, and it's gonna get that heart rate going. <laughs> On to a clean grip, reverse lunge, followed by good mornings. So I'm doing three sets of 16, so eight on each leg, and then I'm gonna do 12 of the good mornings. So here, if you can't do the clean grip, feel free to use another variation. So you can keep the bar in the same place, but cross your arms. So that's one way to grip it. Or you can use wrist straps and extend the wrist straps upward so you can grab the bar slightly higher. So here I'm alternating. I'm focusing on making sure my hips stay nice and square, making sure the weight stays pretty evenly distributed on the front foot and I'm making sure I am stepping evenly on both sides. So this one is great because it's a unilateral or a single leg exercise. So if you're weaker on one side, and we all are, then that side needs a little bit extra focus. So really pay attention, make sure your steps are the same length, make sure that everything stays square, make sure that one hip doesn't shear forward um, or back and go immediately into your good mornings. So here I've got 10 pounds on each side. I'm gonna do 12 reps here. Now weight goes through the heels. 
lower leg stays nice and straight. I'm almost thinking about sitting backwards with this and I don't look in the mirror. And the reason for that is because when you look up, there's a tendency to really arch that lower back and you don't want to have much of an arch there. You want to kind of keep everything nice and straight. Use your hips as the hinge. So as you lower the bar, think about bringing the bar back up with the hamstrings and the glutes. And this is going to light up that <laughs> the glute ham tie-in, you know, kind of where that the underbutt is. <laughs> so this is really great for tying everything together. Um, awesome for building a little bit in the lower back too. So strengthening that lower back and make sure you're feeling this exercise, not looking up in the mirror. So make sure you keep that back nice and flat. Make sure those hips come back on the way down. And I don't go all the way up on this. When I feel that tension, I like to kind of keep that tension. The next exercise is a goblet squat on the cable, followed by a Nordic curl. So here, three sets of 15 on the goblet squat and three sets of as many reps as possible on the Nordic curl. So I think I'm doing about 80 pounds here. You want to hold this like a goblet. So basically your elbows are going to be underneath the weight and that's how you're going to stabilize yourself. So it's not really a lot of upper body. It's mostly just stabilization with the upper body. Weight goes through the heels. This is awesome for training the glutes. Awesome for training the quads and this, the cable will give you constant tension. So even though it's not a ton of weight, uh, it is higher rep and it is constant tension. So you're always going to feel something on that posterior chain and on your quads. Make sure with this that you keep your upper body nice and tall at all times. So do not lean forward, especially as you get tired. Really keep an eye on that form. Make sure you're going to parallel, a little bit below parallel. You're going to hit those glutes if you do. Next exercise is a Nordic curl. I've got Evan here with me, holding me down. <laughs> if you do not have a training partner, feel free to wedge your toes under any piece of equipment that you can get your toes under. Um, I use a yoga mat here. If you use the ground, um, it is pretty hard on those kneecaps. So make sure you have some kind of padding under your knees. Here, maintain a plank position, control your movements. So lower yourself with your hamstrings, lower until you can't lower yourself anymore and then fall softly. Simultaneously push yourself back up with your arms and pull with your hamstrings. On these three sets here, you should be able to get quite a few on the first one, maybe a little less on the second one, even less on the third one. But the more you do them, the stronger you'll get. This is amazing. This is the number one exercise for building beautiful hamstrings. And you can do it pretty much anywhere. So just make sure you stay in a plank. Don't bend at the hip. It's really tough, especially as you get tired. So really focus on the hamstrings. Um, that third set, there's a tendency to gas. So you might be able to go, let's say 12, then maybe nine, then maybe six reps, um, maybe. So, but you can control how hard it is. <laughs> Watch out for the headbutt. <laughs> I'm stuck. The very last exercise is a calf burnout. So this is going to be standing calf raise, three sets of as many reps as possible. And I've got it at about 50% of what I would normally do. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I think I might've gotten like nine on the first one. <laughs> so, um, make sure you choose your weight, choose your weight accordingly. Um, at this point, especially after the Nordic curls, they, the Nordic curls do hit calves secondarily, so you are going to be fatigued. So try to get as many reps as possible. I got that nice mark there from where I partially tore my calf a few months ago. So still working through that. Um, that's another great reason to always train your calves and always stretch. Supersets, higher reps, and keeping your recovery to a minimum in between each superset is the key for getting that cardio without having to get on the treadmill. Also, make sure you're choosing tons of compound movements over isolation movements. That's also gonna help you get leaner with less effort. If you like this workout, please give it a thumbs up.
If you want to see more videos, don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell too. You'll be the first to know whenever a new video comes out. Thanks for watching and until next time, switch it up y'all and train hard.